Yo, yo, yo! Hello, everybody, and welcome to Herstory episode 11. Ah, normally I do the finger thing, but I've run out of fingers. And then one. <laughs> it's very exciting. I am uh, very pleased to be double figures, and I'm very pleased that you're all following me along this journey, or if you've just started joining me along this journey, thank you. Thank you for tuning in and... Um, and and loving this as much as I am, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep continuing as long as you want me to. Um, so we had a poll last week, and Mary Curie was the winner. So today we're going to be talking about Mary Curie. Um, just before we do, though, I would like to see are there any Papa Roach fans in the house? I'm wearing this uh, long sleeve top today because it's a little bit chilly. This is England, after all, and. Um, I just love slobbing around in this top, and Papa Roach are my favourite band, so you remember that tattoo, that band tattoo that you had done when when you just turned 18 and you were silly and naive, and I had that done three years ago, and <laughs> uh, anyway, um, no, I love it, and I'm not ashamed of it, but I want to see your band tattoos, so please post your band tattoos below because I would absolutely love to see them. Now, we're talking about Marie Curie today. The thing with this is I'm going to be consulting my notes quite regularly because I am not a scientist by no means. I just about scraped through with a GCSE from um, high school in science. I loved biology, uh, chemistry, okay, physics completely went over my head. Um, and the thing about Marie Curie is she was insane smart. So in researching this, I had to look into and learn a lot of things that I didn't have a freaking clue about. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try and break it down as much as I can. And I've, I've tried to keep it as simple as possible for both you and I, but there are some very interesting concepts going on here. I swear living in the country is great. Got the window open, someone bobbing around on their bike, someone else taking out the wheelie bin, the birds are chirping. I apologise, apologise for the background noise, I'll just have to be louder in order to compensate. So anyway, Marie Curie, one of the most important people in science, not just one of the most important women, one of the most important people in science. Twice Nobel Prize winner. I don't think anybody else has ever won two Nobel Prizes in different, certainly not in different categories, um, but she did. Uh, she's a scientific pioneer and any of us who have a cancer survivor close to us or are a cancer survivor or have anybody that is still with us due to chemotherapy and the effects of radiotherapy, we have Mary Curie to thank for that as somebody who has lost people close to me through cancer and who has kept people close to me through radiotherapy this woman completely blows my mind and I am so glad to be doing an episode on her so without further ado let's get started and look at Mary Curie Maria Salome Sledowska I'm hoping I'm saying that right. I'll be very upset if I'm not. I'm, I keep saying this, don't I? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upset people constantly every week with my bad pronunciation. Maria Salome Sladowska is born on November the 7th, 1867 in Warsaw, Poland. She was the fifth child to high school teacher parents. Her mum had tuberculosis and was deathly afraid of infecting her children, so she refused to hug them or give them any physical affection whatsoever, which must have been really, really difficult growing up. I can't imagine growing up and not being able to hug my mum. That would, that would be really hard. Um, the family were poor and Manya, as she was nicknamed as a child, slept on the sofa. Her family had to take in lodgers and um, they really struggled to make ends meet. Her father was a teacher of physics and she was absolutely enthralled by his instruments, especially the electroscope, which will come in handy later. She lost her sister from typhus and her mother from tuberculosis by the age of 10. She sucks. She was super smart. She had an amazing memory. And in 1883, she completed her high school education first in her class in every single subject. That's incredible. 
The Russian government prevented any women from attending the University of Warsaw because um, Poland is under Russian uh, Russian rule at that point. Um, so she applied to the University of Paris and she spent six years working as a governess and a tutor to fund uh, her trip to university. Not just her trip, but her sister's as well. That's her. Um, she also attended secret meetings of floating universities, uh, learning about science, which were banned by the Russians. In 1889, she used her cousin's influence at Warsaw's Museum of Industry and Agriculture to gain access to their laboratory. And the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> her story. By 1891, she'd saved up enough money for her and her sister to go and study in Paris. Uh, she changed her name to Marie, which was the French version of Mania, uh, or Maria. And uh, she attended Sorbonne University. She lived in a tiny attic with no lighting, a small coal stove, no running water. And she worked in the university library to fund her living expenses. She graduated in 1893 with a master's degree in physics. That's, that's pretty cool stuff for back then. She was also top of her class and she won a scholarship to study a second degree in maths. Here she met Pierre Curie, teacher and head of the laboratory at the School of Industrial Physics and Chemistry in Paris. He was famous for his work with crystals and magnets. They were married in July 26, 1895, not without some convincing from Pierre. He was quite stubborn. I can't think of the word. Persistent. He was quite persistent in his wooing of Marie. Um, when they got married, she wore a dark blue lab suit, which I think is absolutely amazing. Um, ever the practical lady. In August 1896, she gave birth to their first child, Irene. She wanted a PhD in physics. This is unheard of at this time. Women do not have doctorates. Um, so she decided to study uranium rays. There'd been a, a, a little bit done on the subject, but really not a lot. Um, so she decided that she wanted to test all 70 elements of the periodic table. I know there's a lot more now, but at the time there were all 70 elements of the periodic table. She wanted to test them for radiation. In July 1898, she announced the discovery of a new element called polonium, which she named after her native Poland. She invented the word radioactive, and in December, she discovered another element called radium. Between 1900 and 1903, she published many papers on her work, completing her doctorate and trying to produce pure radium. Now, from what I understand, and bear with me on this, if there's any scientists in the house, please help us out. In order to prove the existence of a new element, you have to somehow get that element down to one single atom and that atom has to contain no traces of any other element on the periodic table. I think that's right. So this is what her life's work turns into, is trying to get down to one atomic molecule so that she can prove her discoveries, I think. Hope that's right. Hope all my research hasn't been for nothing. Um... On July the 21st, 1902, she reported the weight of one radium atom. In 1903, she became the first woman in Europe to receive a doctorate in science. Very cool. Very cool. Um, however, Pierre and Marie were constantly tired. She had lost a lot of weight. She had suffered several miscarriages and both had burnt numb fingertips. Now we would recognise that as radiation damage. Um, but at the time, radiation exposure wasn't a known thing because she was working with a completely new substance, a completely new idea. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, she didn't neither her nor her husband took the precautions that nowadays we know we should doctors 
tested radiation on diseased cells and found that it destroyed them. So soon they used it to treat cancer. In 1903, Marie and Pierre were awarded the Humphrey Davy Medal, England's highest award in chemistry. A month later, her and Pierre won the Nobel Prize for Physics and a cash award which helped fund their research. In 1904, her second daughter Eve was born. In April 1906, Pierre was running errands when he stepped out into the road and was mown down by a horse-drawn carriage. The rear wheels crushed his skull and he died instantly. Marie obviously was completely devastated by Pierre's death, but she knew that he wouldn't want her to give up all of their research and everything that they'd poured into this radiation study. So when she was offered her husband's job as a professor at the Sorbonne University, she accepted and became the first female teacher there. In 1909, plans were put in place to build the Radium Institute in Paris. Marie would have her own lab called the Curie Pavilion. By 1910, she'd produced Pure Radium and published her treatise on radioactivity, which was a whopping 900 pages long. In 1911, she alone was awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry for making pure radium. A new unit of measurement for radiation, the Curie, was devised, and she set to work creating how the unit should be calculated. Again, in comes the First World War. This, as I say, it's becoming a theme. Marie then has to throw herself into the war effort. And what she does is she creates mobile X-ray units um, that she can that can be taken around in the field to locate uh, bullets and shrapnel in um, wounded soldiers. And she sets up courses to treat radiographers. This is really exciting for me because my stepmom, my dad's wife, is a radiographer. So this is... This is really cool. This is kind of where it all began. Um, in 1918, she became a director of the Paris Radium Institute. Many universities awarded her special degrees in recognition of her achievements. And in 1922, she was at last elected to the French Academy of Medicine. Big accolade. So the dangers of radiation were then starting to become clear and precautions were taken for any new people that were coming into the lab and, and were working with radioactive material but it was too late for Marie. Um, they caused her cataracts and her health declined. I think she had in total four or five operations on her cataracts. She became very very ill and was cared for in the later years of her life by her daughter Eve and she died on July the 4th 1934 in Switzerland of aplastic anemia which is a lack of red blood cells caused by extended exposure to radiation. Has anybody been watching Chernobyl? The the um the sky TV series on, on Chernobyl, this is all, having watched that, this is very scary stuff and she was a very brave and inspirational woman or maybe she didn't know any better but um, yeah, having seen that and knowing what I know about Chernobyl and radiation, she was a pretty gutsy lady. So here we are, fun facts about Marie Curie. Her daughter Irene also won a Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1935. The family, as a collective, won five Nobel Prizes between all of them in total. That is nuts. So Marie, Pierre, her daughter Irene and two more of the Curies won Nobel Prizes. That is insane. In 1995, Marie and Pierre were reburied in the Pantheon in Paris. She's the only woman to be given that privilege based on achievement alone. The Curie Institutes of Paris and Warsaw are still major centres for medical research today. She carried test tubes containing radioactive isotopes in her pockets and stored them in her desk drawer and would remark light-heartedly on the faint light they gave off in the dark. Her papers from the 1890s are still considered too dangerous to handle. They're kept in lead-lined boxes and anyone who wants to look at them has to wear full protective clothing. 
apparently her cookbook is also kept in a lead-lined box, which I think is just wonderful, so charming. All of the proceedings from all of her awards were donated to science and further research and teaching. She completely shied away from fame of any kind. She refused to patent the radium isolation process so the scientific community as a whole could do further research on it unhindered. What a selfless and wonderful lady. In 2009, a poll carried out by the New Scientist magazine, she was voted the most inspirational woman in science, and quite rightly so. Element number 96 is named Curium after her. Props to whoever found that and named it after her. She has metro stations named after her. She has an asteroid named after her, a nuclear reactor named after her. Marie Curie Cancer Care was created in 1948 to provide care for the terminally ill and still goes on to this day. And if you've been inspired by what you've heard today in her story, please do go and donate some money to Marie Curie Cancer Care. Um, there are two museums in Paris and Warsaw solely dedicated to her, numerous biographies, films, plays, banknotes, stamps, coins, murals, stained glass installations, and she even has her own bridge. That is one amazing lady. So let me know what you think. What a girl. What a girl. I mean, I knew Mary Curie was rad before I started researching this. But I did not know just how freaking cool this woman is. And as I say, all of us who have cancer survivors in our family or our cancer survivors ourselves have this wonderful woman to thank for those extra years with our loved ones. And that is something really, really special. So thank you, Marie. Thank you for existing and for your wonderful brain and for saving so many lives. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm, as you can tell, I'm really excited by Marie and I, and I love her story. Um, so, yeah, as always, uh, there will be a new poll over on my Facebook page, The Herstory Girls. Please do head over there and um, click on who you would like to see in next week's episode of Herstory. Thank you very much for joining me and I will see you next week. Bye.